In this video, I'll share with you some of the hidden features of Logic Pro. First, let's look at Apple's collection of plugins. Some of you probably didn't know they exist or simply never checked them out. If you go to Preferences and Plugin Manager, you can see that Apple has provided a lot of basic plugins. Those are probably there for developers as a tech demo, or a starting point for plugin designers. Most of them actually sound pretty good, and my personal favorites are the new Pitch and Matrix Reverb. You can drag them to your folder so it's easily accessible. Now let me show you why those two plugins deserve your attention. Here I have a vocal sample. I... Let's open new pitch plugin. You can see that it has only one slider that lets you pitch audio in cents. 1200 cents is equal to one octave or 12 semitones. Let's hear how that sounds. If you press an arrow below, you get overlap slider. This way you can reduce artifacts and make the audio sound smoother. Now let's see what makes this plugin special. Here I have Logic Speech Shifter. I'm going to pitch it up 12 semitones as well, so we can compare the quality of repitching. And the third sample I'll simply transpose it by using Shift Option Up key command to transpose it one octave up. Now let's hear all three examples in a row. You can hear that all three ways of repitching sound slightly different. Logic Speech Shifter creates more artifacts and transposing sample changes transients and playback of the audio. It becomes more obvious if we try to go one octave down. Let's see what that would sound like. I'm going to repeat the process but this time transpose all three samples 12 semitones down. <laughs> Of all three, I personally prefer the new pitch, but in some cases Logic Select Speech does a good job. You should decide yourself what works best. But it's always good to have options, so try it. Now let's move to the second plugin, Apple's Matrix Reverb. I really like this one especially for its room sound. Works great on drums. Below dry wet mix you can find small large room mix that lets you combine two types of reverb. You can balance between two rooms. Below you can see separate settings for both small and large room. I think with some tweaking you can get natural sound out of it. Also, it comes with a few presets that you can use as a starting point. I recommend you check what plugins are available and see what you like. Basically, you get a pack of free plugins and some of them are definitely worth adding to your collection. Now let's move to the second tip. Go to View Enable Show Toolbar. The toolbar offers a variety of buttons and other controls for working with regions in the track area, as well as other functions. The default set of buttons provides the most commonly used options. You can customize the toolbar by adding additional controls or removing existing functions. Let me show you my favorite ones that I use a lot. Here I have exported sample that is slightly slower than the project tempo. I could use flex time to shrink it, but often it creates small gaps that is hard to notice. I prefer placing my locators on the grid and then use stretch to locators function to precisely sync the sample to project's tempo based on the grid position. It's easier and faster in my opinion. Here's another example. Let's say you have a long vocal region and you'd like to pick a few words or lines from it. You can resize the region first and then use control option arrow keys to scroll the waveform so you can find parts you like while listening to the rest of the arrangement. The notch value in the toolbar lets you change how fast you scroll the waveform. This is especially useful if you're resampling big files and then cherry picking part to create melody or a phrase. Now let's move to the next tip. It's possible to capture your most recent MIDI performance, even if Logic Pro isn't recording, using the capture recording feature. Let's say you're jamming and play the melody you liked. Capture recording creates a region containing all the MIDI events, received whether in playback mode or stopped.
If you don't see it in control bar, then simply right click and customize the view. Very useful and will save you a lot of time. Next tip is pretty simple. Use Ctrl S key command to activate solo lock mode. Now any region you click on will be soloed, so you can listen to parts you select without the need to solo entire track, or keep switching between them. You can select multiple regions, and use Shift spacebar to quickly play them. Good for navigation. Now let's move to the last tip of this video. VarySpeed provides a way to speed up or slow down the entire project, similar to the original VarySpeed feature of tape machines. And again, if you don't see it, then you'd have to customize your control bar to add it. The most practical use for this option is checking how a project might sound at faster tempo or slower, and for practicing or recording a performance at a lower speed. Also, you can change the speed and the pitch at the same time, if that's what you want. And that's all I've got today. Let me know in the comments if that was useful, or you have any questions. Until next time.